I have friends who aren't practicing Muslims and who have openly expressed to me that they don't like to be preached uh, to should I still stay in contact with them but refrain from talking about religion. Yes, be good to them. That's all. This Islam is not that cheap that you give to everybody. But at the same time, you should not be looking down upon them. You should not be hating them. If you are able to help them, if they need your help, you should help them. Don't See, if they don't want something, Allah will not force them. Like Rahaf al-Din, there is no compulsion in the deen. If they don't want you to talk about Islam, forget it. But you don't be part of their bad things. This is one thing. If they don't want good, you don't be part of the bad. And you can do your good. You can still have the... Uh, the Rasul Sallallahu never, you know, left the connection and relationship with the bad people. No. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said this. this. This is the wording of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sal man qata'ak. Sal man And the one who is cutting you off, try to join him. Which means if somebody is not good in Islam, is not practicing, don't bother him. But if you are like a colleague in the company or the office or the school, that's fine. Show your character. Show your manners. I'll tell you the place where I run my madrasa. This madrasa is actually governed by, uh, the, the center is governed by the uh, non-Muslims. They are sponsored and employed by the council, Luton Borough Council. At the beginning, they found me difficult, that I'm difficult to contact or have a relationship. And they, they, I found myself with them the same. But gradually, seeing my attitude, I used to greet them, I used to shake hands with them, I used to laugh at them, uh, with them and joke with them. I used to, you know, whenever I used to buy something for myself, I would buy for them. Now these non-Muslims are greeting, they are coming to my madrasa where, mashallah, students are there, kids are there. They say, Asalaamu Alaikum. They are non-Muslims. And they are not like hypocrites. They really mean that they are respecting the kids and they are thinking that, these kids are doing something good. Sometimes they, while talking with me, they'll say, Inshallah, we will do this. This, this is the non-Muslims. So you have to be good to yourself and be good to others. Forget about how others are doing. If they are bad and you do the same, then there's no difference between you and them. You are Muslim. Muslims should be different than non-Muslims. We are supposed to encourage fellow Muslims to practice the faith. To forbid evil when see it. How should we act in these situations? Wisdom. Wisdom. Don't, don't force them. Don't insult them. Don't be harsh on them. Don't be abusive. Alhamdulillah. And if they don't want to listen to you and they are trying to be extra smart, say good luck. That's all. Why do you have to be worried about that? If they don't want it, don't force them. Leave them to their uh, and if they ask you, there are people, subhanAllah, there are people, they will come and ask you sometimes that, uh, can you please help me with this? Yes. Change. But like if you are a woman and you wear hijab, don't look down upon or don't feel or don't hate the one who does not have the hijab. Maybe there could be some good qualities in that person which you don't have and that could, you know, can reflect in her and you and both can, you know, help each other in a good way. Because the peace is only in religion. But how can they come to our religion? I, I was listening to one of the uh, ex-Muslim. He became non-Muslim. And he is such a, you know, abusive person with his words. He speaks, you know, a normal person will not speak about Rasul like that. A normal person will not speak about the Sahaba. A normal person will not speak about, you know, uh, any Muslim woman like that. But this man is speaking. And he is, at the same time, he's also insulting the Muslim, saying, look, how can, you know, uh, any Muslim, any non-Muslim will become Muslim because of your attitude? You are this, you are this, you are this. And whatever he said, it is true. This is how we Muslims are. We are shouting at others, we are laughing at others, we are being harsh with them, we are disconnecting with them because they are not practicing or because they are non-Muslims or because they 
drink alcohol or they are eating pork or they are having you know boyfriend girlfriend relationship or they are gays or they are lesbians we 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 have all these issues come on man you you have an opportunity that prove yourself to be good in the sight of allah and allah will change their minds they will look at you they will see and one of the examples i'm not boasting i'll give you one of the examples Nine years in my masjid, in this uh, Delo Community Center where I delivered the Jummah Khutbah. Eight years, nine years, there are two Christian scholars, pastors. I don't know what is their intention. In their heart, Allah knows that. I'm not concerned about that. But they come into my place where I deliver the Jummah Khutbah. They come before the Adhan. They sit there in the corner behind the people. They listen to the Adhan. They listen to my Khutbah. And even in my khutbah, I, if I had to say something, you know, that could maybe, maybe that, that could, you know, go against the teaching from the Bible. But I do say, and they are sitting there. They listen to my khutbah. And then after the khutbah, I, uh, deal my, I uh, lead my prayer. And after the prayer, brothers are there. They come and they ask me questions for maybe sometimes 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. These brothers, the Christian brothers are sitting there. And then after the, the, these people have left, our people, Muslims, I go and sit with them and we talk again about Bible, we talk about Quran, we talk about uh, the khutbas. And they are, they are the people who have invited me in their churches to talk about Islam. These are the people. And in Luton, there are masajid, Muslim masajid, they don't invite me even for the lectures. And these are Muslims. I don't know why they don't invite me because they don't think I'm Muslim. But these Christians, pastors, they're scholars of the religion. They have invited me in their own churches. They have organized those lectures and they ask me to talk about their, uh, about Islam. Four or five occasions where the students, Christian students, students from universities who are reading, who are learning, Christianity as, as a de degree course for them. These students, every year, every year, this is not like, you know, one, two times. Every year, you can say like eight, eight years, nine years, every year, a group of people, students who are studying in the universities, they could be from China, Japan, or they may be America, any part of the world, or they are British, but they are students, and they are students of Christianity. They study Christi Christianity as a graduation course. They are invited in our place. And these two pastors, they arrange them. And I am there. What? For what? They invite me. And these students, they have, you know, their books and pen and papers with them. And they ask me the question about Islam. They want to learn about more about Islam. More about Quran. More about Rasul Sallallahu But these Muslims, our Muslims, subhanAllah, they never ever, you know, invite me. I'm open there. Like we have, mashallah, radio channels. In Luton, uh, rarely I am invited. I don't know. Allahu alam. What is the reason? Maybe I'm 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 not qualified for them, or maybe I'm a, a critics for them. So I maybe some someone who maybe not doing something.